Most people think that language is mainly used to convey factual information, but it does so much more. The words we use reveal a lot about who we are, what we like and dislike, what we believe in, and who we affiliate with. As listeners, we're so good at decoding what people say, we don't even realise we're doing it. In New Zealand, English is the majority language, a variety specific to the country called New Zealand English. Its most distinctive feature is the use of words borrowed from the language of the country's indigenous Māori people. But Māori words are also used by people who are neither ethnic Māori nor speakers of Māori. Why? Linguists used to think that one reason languages borrow words from other languages was that they didn't have a word for a particular concept. For example, English borrowed kimono from Japanese because English had no equivalent. Others argue that borrowings arise because bilinguals import words from one language into another. But there are other explanations and New Zealand English provides a good case study of these. When European settlers and New Zealand's indigenous Māori first came into contact, Māori words for plants and animals unknown to the settlers were adopted into English. These included kiwi and pukeko for types of bird, pawa, a kind of shell, and kumara, a variety of sweet potato. Given that more than 250 years have since passed, we might expect the flow of Māori words into English for concepts unknown to Europeans to have stopped or at least slowed down. But the flow has actually increased. What's more, the words that many New Zealanders are now borrowing from Māori relate to different kinds of concepts, not only animals and plants, but socio-cultural concepts too. These include words like fano, meaning extended family, haka, a tribal dance, tamariki, meaning children, and waiata, for singing. What's happening? Well, new research indicates two important patterns. Not every New Zealander uses these words equally. In fact, some don't ever use them, while others use them a lot. And those who do use them are motivated by social rather than linguistic reasons. For example, to show affinity with Māori language and culture and to signal their positive attitude towards the country's indigenous people. This way, they seek to highlight contemporary New Zealand's distinct identity. It's proof that language remains a powerful social glue that binds people together and transmits many rich layers of information. What's not explicitly said is often the most important part of the message.